Hi, I'm Stephen Crone, and so I'm going to show you how to paint a Foddish stream. But first, let me show you the um, paint so you can paint along with me. Here's my palette, and I just get the right way around. I always have the right same way around so I know instinctively where all the colours are. And we have ultramarine, cadmium yellow, Payne's grey, lizard and crimson, raw sienna, burnt umber, and light red. The large Ron Ranson hake brush I always use and 15 by 11 watercolour paper. I'm going to start with the big hake brush and I'm just putting clean water all over the paper. This will just stop it from going all crinkly and soften all the background colours. Which we'll start with a bit of a bit of raw sienna, a bit of cadmium yellow. And just mix the two of those and just bash them in. Right down to the bottom. And we're going to introduce a little bit of ultramarine to the yellow. And we've just got various shades of green. I want to create a leave this area lit just to try and create some sort of light effect coming through all the trees onto our stream that's going to flow through the painting and away. I'm just trying to get various shades of, uh, of green at the moment just to try and keep it interesting just so it's not all, all the same colour. And then once I've got that in Start putting some trunks in, some trees. So that, that's that'll do for starters, I think. Right, next on some sort of distant tree. So I'm going to start off. So I'm going to dip a little bit of water into the, into the palette because the uh, little rigger brush don't take much water. Constantly having to reload the brush. So all I'm doing, just flicking it up, and these are the most distant trees. Because the paper's still wet, these will just soften off and look really far away, especially when putting the closer ones. <clears throat> Push these right into the background. So I'm just flicking them up and then just pulling down the reflections. Reload the brush. A few more on this side. Pull down these reflections. A bit more water. A bit more blue, a bit more yellow. Try to sort of greeny colour. And then put the last few in. A few more up there, a few more down there, a few reflections. It is raining outside, so it might get a bit loud if it carries on because it hammers off the off the roof there. That's what I'm going to do for that, I think. Now what I might do, while I've got this colour on my brush, just work out how things going to land. So the horizon line's right up there. And it's just going to... The roof is coming down there. bit down there as well. well. Just give me a rough idea of how everything's going to lie. Right, so paper's dried a little bit, so this will go on a little bit stronger. Don't forget the reflections. Do them at the same time, it makes life a lot easier. A few more trees up there. A few more reflections down there. I ain't worrying about doing that. That'll be land there, but I'll just paint straight over that. You've got to worry about that. And then, now these are a little bit close, so you can see all the twigs and branches on these. So I'm just going to start popping a few, a few in, a few limbs there. And then, as you put in the reflect the um the the, the twigs and whatnot on me, don't forget to reflect down below what you've done above. 
do some a little bit stronger. in there. Right, the paper stretched a little bit so I'm just going to pull it tight against this piece of plywood that I use and then I'll be good to go again. Right, so I'm just going to put a little bit stronger in there. So a bit more ultramarine, a bit more yellow. to darken that a bit. Ultramarine, a bit of burnt umber in there as well, a little bit of mud, mud in those banks. Coming down there like that. Now when we get back to a light colour so I'll clean the brush and then back into a bit of raw sienna, a bit of lemon yellow. And just over here, moving on to the left hand side, there's just a few little things up there. I'm just waiting for the paper to dry. I could use a hair dryer, but I'll just let it dry while I'm doing this. And then once I've got the uh, once the paper's dry, then I'll put in the, the, the strongest trees using the height brush this time instead of the little rigger brush. Just put a little ultramarine just to vary this green a little bit. Right, I think I'm ready now for these trees. So, burnt umber, ultramarine, a little bit of yellow in there as well. Now these are the these will be the closest trees now. So we've got one up there. This is going I don't know, a little bit darker, a bit more brown, a bit more blue. This is going up there like that. And I'll just put some twigs on that while it's there. That's loud in there, so I'm going to worry about the reflection because it's just, it's just a, bit of, a bit of land down the bottom there. And we've got a big tree going up there. down below. Something there in the background. If you have that edge very straight then it's uh, went a bit went a bit curvy. It's very narrow stick like thing there. So I know it's giving that way. Let's stick a few twigs and branches on it. Don't forget the reflections. Doesn't have to be bang on. I mean, this certainly certainly isn't too accurate, but just gives the idea of something being reflected there in the water. You can pull these in with the with the rigger brush if you like. Don't have to put them in with a the hike. Yeah, something over there. And then what I might do after this, just put a 
bit of dry brushwork just to suggest a bit of foliage even there. First, let's just put a. Do now, do I need any more? I don't know if I do. Let's put some foliage on. So I'm cleaning the brush and then I'm just squeezing the water out like that, making sure I the uh, the water jar. And just squeeze a bit more out onto the uh, tea towel. Scuff it up like that. Don't be afraid of it, you ain't gonna damage the brush too much. The air's fall out anyway, I'm always getting airs falling out. I've got to the stage now where I don't even bother taking them off, taking them off the paper. Just part of the painting. Don't worry about it. A bit of, bit of raw sienna, a bit of yellow. So I'll start off with the, with the lighter colours, the light tones. And then I add a bit of ultramarine just to darken it up a bit. And then a bit of Payne's grey to really darken it up. And let's just stick with the light ones for now. Raw sienna, cadmium yellow, or lemon yellow, whatever, whatever you've got on your palette. I'm just using this because I ordered the wrong paint. Well, I'm quite starting to quite like it actually. I should experiment a bit more, I think. I'm, I'm, I'm terrible for just. Once, once I've. Uh, um, I don't like change, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Once I've got something that I'm, I'm, I'm happy with, I think you just stick with it. But experimenting is the, the only way you're going to learn, learn that. Like that in. Right, now we need a bit more, bit of yellow, bit of, bit of Payne's grey. Put some darker bits in there, some darker reflections. Just get it on down there. The darker ones up there. Right, let's pop this, strengthen these banks a bit. Right, so I'm just doing a bit of brown, a bit of blue. I'm clean the brush because I've gone dark. Just dip the corner of the hairs into the water just to try and bring the hairs back together, but not too much because I still want it a good thick mix. Banks in. Yeah, that's a bit too dry. I need it a bit wet. That's too wet. So I'm just putting it in the t in the tissue just to dry it a bit. A bit of brown. Right, there we've got. Put these banks in. I might do. Let's just pop a few little rocks in there as well, I think. The rocks. And then we've got it's like a little rapids this bit, so I'll just just quickly Sweeping over. Softening that up a little bit, don't be too dark. Clean the brush, so it's just like a damp, clean brush now with a sharp edge. Let's just put out some of these corners. Just that was a bit too wet then. That the, the brush. I should have dried it a bit more. I'm 
finish dabbing dabbing the paper here and there trying to create sort of ripples on the surface so little little reflections Bit of, bit of land down there. So I'm just gonna go great big dollop of yellow. Let's just back down. A bit of ultramarine there as well. I'll just slap it in. You know what I mean? It's just a great way of doing things. Just get plenty of paint on, a bit of paint on, a bit of paint on, just back in there. Don't worry about it. something down there what we need a little bit more shadow and, um, a bit of water I'm not inside that with these things to be honest with you A little bit of a mess, but I'm not going to worry about it too much. Need a few more shadows, a few more shadows in there. So I'm going to bit of ultramarine, bit of lemon yellow, bit of Payne's grey, bit of bit of um, raw sienna, sort of darky green type of colour. A few shadows up there. Just reflect something down there. Just darken this a little bit. Again, a few shadows down there. The, the shadowy areas will sort of emphasise the, the light areas and just, just make it more dramatic. Just, just little dips and dabs there. Just, I'm just being careful not to block in the whole thing. Just trying to... Trying to keep it sort of. And then amongst all the shadowy areas, you can imagine the light's coming through and just, just catching like a little a rock or something there, like highlights on a rock. Don't like that, paint straight over that. And then any more. Imagine just put a few reflections of these rocks there. Then. So I'm just reflecting some of these stones. It was still wet, fortunately, so I could get away with it. Um, a few things growing there and there. So again, light coming through there and just, just catching a, a rough, just there. Also something on this side. Down there, a few more rocks down there. Right, I'm just going to pause it and have a look at it from a distance. Trying to look at it. I think it's getting very close to just getting a bit messy so I think I'm just going to leave it leave it at that for now I think uh, all I'm going to do now is just switch back to the little brush and just stick my name if I can just find a, a dry dry part just stick my name down there right, so let's just uh, let's just put a mount on it and see what it looks like so there's the painting all fully mounted. So let's go and have a closer look at it. First thing that strikes me, I might, I might, if I did it again, I might make this light area just a bit smaller. I think it's just maybe a bit too big. 
could have done with see this sort of light tone maybe a bit more of that around just to create some distant foliage there just to fill in a little bit just then just have like a little bit of light sort of coming through the scene but then try to emphasize this light by putting lots of lots of shadow around here and a bit more on the left hand side as well and then amongst that shadow just scrapes in a few rocks here just so it looks as if the light's just catching the the rocks there same on this side a few rocks scraped in a few reflections down below not not particularly accurate but then you can see the range of trees from the first ones i put in which are hardly visible which look really far away to the sort of mid mid range ones then to the closest ones put in with a height brush the really strong ones that look a lot closer and push everything else really far back and then all these I was putting the reflections in just help help mix it more watery water like well that's it for today thanks for watching um, keep practicing don't forget to subscribe leave your comments down below and until next time Happy painting and I'll see you again soon.